the HTTP request action is the most powerful action within Tynes. Most stories rely heavily on this action, since it allows you to interact with other tools. For example, you can use it to find all tweets that mention specific keywords, or to fetch alerts from third-party systems, or to update a ticket in your case management system of choice. This action transfers data by sending HTTP requests to a specific URL. To use HTTP request action, begin by dragging and dropping it onto your storyboard. The agent properties on the right-hand side of the storyboard is where you'll configure the action. Rename your action so you can easily identify what step in your workflow it's responsible for. You'll typically configure a HTTP request action by referring to your target tool's API documentation. You'll need to specify where the request should be sent by entering the URL. Make sure to include the URI scheme, HTTP or HTTPS. The method field is where you'll tell Tynes which HTTP method to use for the request. Get, post, put, patch, and delete are all supported. If unspecified, this field defaults to post. The payload field is where you'll insert the crucial data that you want to submit to the target tool when you are making a request. The request can be sent or received in various formats, but JSON is by far the most common. The next field you'll come across is content type. This is where you'll specify how the payload should be formatted when making the request. There are lots of options, but JSON is the standard for most APIs. Shorthands are provided for some of the other common content types, like XML or form. Headers are metadata that travels within a request. If you're using an API that requires authorization, you'll most likely need to enter it here. You can securely store sensitive information such as API tokens and passwords, using the credentials feature. Once configured, you can schedule your action or have it run on demand. The response to your request will be emitted as a new event and will contain a body, headers, and status returned by the target tool. The status in an emitted event, which contains the HTTP response code returned by the target tool, is a particularly important field. HTTP response status codes provide a standardized way for systems to indicate whether a request has been successfully completed. Generally speaking, status codes between 200 and 299 indicate that the request was successful. Codes between 400 and 499 indicate a client error and may mean that your action is configured incorrectly. Finally, codes between 500 and 599 indicate a server error and suggest something has gone wrong with the target tool. When automating your mission-critical processes, you'll likely want to know when a HTTP request action fails. Failures can happen for a number of reasons. For example, your credentials could be incorrect. You've made too many requests in a short space of time and the target tool is rate-limiting you. Or the target tool may even be unavailable. In situations like this, a HTTP request action has options called Retry on Status and Fail on Status. With Retry on Status, Tynes will retry the action a number of times over the course of several hours. If the response to a request contains a status code or range of status codes you've specified. If the action continues to return the same status code, Tynes will consider the request to have failed. Combining retry on status and fail on status with action monitoring means you'll always be aware if an action fails unexpectedly.